At any rate, we have not only Pastor Jean Darnell, but we also have Karen Heinbach, who has been given the mantle, Jean's mantle, at church on the way. So she's here as well. So I just want you to, we're so excited. So what a, what a blessing. What a blessing today. You know, we've been praying for you. We've been fasting and praying for 21 days for you, that God would bless you, that you would have a breakthrough in your life, that you would find faith, more faith, when you are downtrodden and discouraged, that God would show you hope, that you would see his face. That's what we've been praying for you, and that's why we're here today. We are nothing nothing without our Lord and Savior, without our God, Amen. without the Holy Spirit. We are nothing. We're lost and wandering alone in the wilderness. And so we thank you, Lord, that you give hope to the hopeless. We thank you, Lord, that you give faith to those who need more faith. Thank you, Lord, that you breathe love, love, Thank you. unquenchable love into your children who've been hurt and are afraid to love. So, Lord, we ask that your holy presence would be here today and you would breathe your, your life, your very life into our being, into the marrow of our bones. Oh, Lord, we love you. Thank you. We adore you. We're so grateful to you. So hear now, hear now these words of worship through song. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus, the very thought of you, it brings me hope and joy and peace, and I just get excited. Do you get excited when I say the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. We worship you. Ha!
salvation to us and we praise you and we worship you for that you alone are our savior amen and amen hallelujah 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 praise the lord jesus son of david thank you lord
on, sing it with us. is here. Jesus right now. Lord, we love Just close your eyes. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, Jesus. We thank you and we welcome your presence in this place. And I keep hearing one word from you over and over and over again as we were worshiping, and that word is breakthrough. These past number of weeks on this fast, you have provided breakthroughs for many in this house. And there are many that you are getting ready to provide breakthroughs for. We just need to reach out in faith, saying, Lord God, you are all that we need. You are yes. the very life, yes. the very breath in our lungs. Yes. We thank you and we give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, Lord God, I sense that there's somebody here today that you are giving a special touch to. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The loss of the past is gone. It's behind them. You said in Jeremiah, I have a future for you and a hope. And somebody here is starting to sense that, that there is a beautiful future in store. Oh, Lord God, during the service, I pray your Holy Spirit sweep like a gentle, beautiful wave across this house. As Jean speaks in her message today, that your Holy Spirit would be Whoa, just fill this place. Fill this place. Fill this place with the renewed, beautiful sense of shalom. Shalom meaning everything we need. Peace, happiness, provision, health. Oh, Lord God, I sense your presence and I thank you. Bless each one here in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I need the mic stand today to read the scripture because we have a powerful scripture that Pastor Gene wanted read. And as I read this scripture, I kept thinking over and over again, not much has changed in 2,000 years. Man is still man. They still treat each other the same way. They're still skeptical today like they were 2,000 years ago. 
So as you read this story, you're going to hear a lot of parallels to present day. Don't just think this happened 2,000 years ago and that's in the past and it has no relevance on our lives today. So think about this as we read from Acts chapter 14. Now it happened in Iconium that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews and so spoke that a great multitude of both the Jews and the Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Therefore they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, part sided with the Jews and part with the apostles. And when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities in Lyconia, and to the surrounding region. And they preached the gospel there. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul, observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up! Straighten your feet! And he leapt and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices, saying in the Lyconian language, The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. And Barnabas they called Zeus. And Paul, they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and garlands to the gate, intending to sacrifice with the multitudes. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard this, they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitudes, crying out, saying, Men, why are you doing these things? We are also men with the same nature as you and preach to you that you should turn from these useless things to the living God, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is within them, who in bygone generations allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witnesses, in that he did good, gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, bringing our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing to them. Then the Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there. And having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. However, when the disciples gathered around Paul, he rose up and went into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derby. May God grant his blessing to the reading of this, his holy word.
Good morning. How you doing, Brother Max? He's our pastor in training. Amen. How you doing, Melinda? I'd like to say good morning to each and every one. And uh, we're going to be preparing to receive the offering. So if you want to take this time to prepare for the offering, that's great. I just want to make a few announcements. Uh, the, we'd like to welcome the Orange County Rescue Mission, who is some of the uh, people from the Orange County Rescue Mission has joined us today. So let's give them. What a wonderful institution that is. And uh, we have our insider, Beth Muma, who's always looking out for us, right? <laughs> And you know, with the Orange County Rescue Mission, some of you were so lovingly, uh, you bought in socks so that the Haynes Company could match those socks. We don't have, quite have a number uh, yet of the amount of socks that you did bring in, but even one pair, Amen. for one pair for a needed person was like a million bucks, believe me. So I'd like to thank you for that. Also, uh, we know last week, uh, some, uh, one of our members, uh, Julie and Bob, they brought in a, a nice uh, dinner for us because they knew we were fasting, and so we like to thank them for the dinner. And finally, uh, you know Michelle Cavender that was on our SALT team? Michelle and Bob, they, they've had job opportunities in Texas, so they're going to be going to Texas. I'm so happy to see Michelle and Bob here today. If you stand so that people can just give you a hand applause and praise. God is just doing some mighty work with his children in this Hope Center of Christ because we put Christ first and we put servant leadership and servanthood first, and God honors that. i like to read a scripture for our offering, and uh, we have a prayer, and then the offering will be collected. It's taken from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 8 through 15. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all of his wondrous Amen. works. Amen. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Amen. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O oh, seed of Israel, the seed of hope center of Christ, his servants, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Remember his covenant forever. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask in your name that you receive our offering to you, dear Heavenly Father. It is not the amount, it is the sacrifice that we willingly make, dear Heavenly Father, to give to you. Because you said that you enjoy receiving from a cheerful giver, dear Heavenly Father. So dear Heavenly Father, those that give and those that are unable to give, we ask that you would bless them, dear Heavenly Father, and may the monies and the offerings will be used to dedicate to your kingdom and to build up your kingdom, dear Heavenly Father, the way that you have called us to do. And dear God, we give you the glory, we give you the praises, for you are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending. You are the bright morning star. You are the rose of Sharon, dear Heavenly Father. You are the lion of Judah. And we give you the glory and the praises in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. 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 While they are collecting, receiving your generous, beautiful gifts to our ministry, um, we have been praying and fasting for the last 21 days. 
And I want to take a moment because you remember a couple weeks ago I preached about prayer. And what prayer is, prayer gives us a front row seat to see God's power on display. That's what prayer is. And our response then is to go and tell. We have to go and tell people what God did. That's our responsibility. So I want to encourage those of you now, some of you, if your heart is fluttering, ah, ha, ha, guess what? The Lord is nudging you to be brave and to come forth right here, right now, and tell the people what God did. Give a testimony right here, right now. Ellen, apparently you're getting pushed to the front. Ellen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm caught in the act. <laughs> yeah, it's my responsibility to share how God good is in our life. About a few years ago, my name was ruined by someone who used my name, so I'm a victim of fraud. But we keep on praying and praying and praying about it, and glory to God, my name is clear. No need for me to go to the court to sue that person because I don't want to do it. But because of God's grace, my name is clear from that treatment. Amen. Her reputation and her credit cleared. God cleared and restored. He restored her good name. That's a beautiful praise, a wonderful, wonderful testimony. Anybody else? Who else has a testimony? Rochelle, I know you do. Come on up, Can brave heart. Can I say heart. one more thing about her? She's trying to buy a house, and she needed her name cleared so that she could buy that house and get a loan. Otherwise, she wouldn't be able to get it. And that's the miracle God did for her. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you, Rochelle. Hello, um, I've been unemployed for like two months. After the last project, it was just like dry. There's no films, maybe I worked one commercial and one day on a feature. And uh, this month, we're like overflowing. Kirk's going to Hawaii to teach. And then I got 20 days plus four days in the middle, so I'm like overbooked until October. So God is good. <laughs> Wow. Okay. That's a, some of the things we've prayed for. Anybody else have a testimony of what God's done in the last 21 days? This is your time. You're one opportunity. Eileen, do you have a testimony? Come up here, Eileen. Eileen blesses me. And the Lord uses, speaks, has spoken to me through Eileen. Yeah, he has. They'll wait. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I've been homeless a long time, and I've written a small, uh, it's a blog, and it's going to turn out to be a small a book, like a pamphlet in churches. And uh, here it is. I want to take it out and just, um, uh-oh, I want people to uh, know about it, and I'm going to give some away free, and uh, the Lord has blessed me to write this, and it's the brightest side of being homeless, and it's really good. It's, um, you know, just to uplift people and to teach other homeless, teach others that we're never homeless, that homeless people are good people, and for the most part, it shows it's not your fault for many of them if they were homeless. They, they've had maybe a, a fire, that they didn't have insurance to recover, or their children and their parents are homeless, or they're in a, an abusive relationship and they couldn't, uh, they had to be homeless from that. Uh, many different reasons. And um, just uplifting, it just says, uh, don't give up, you know, no matter what, and um, count your blessings, it could always be worse. And, um, I just want to share that. I won't take all the time up, and uh, it's going to be wonderful for many. So, thank you, Eileen. Thank you. Wow. You know, how many of you, if you were sleeping on a par on a bench underneath a bus stop at night, because that's Eileen. She's told me that's where she feels safest in the light where people won't bother her in the middle of the night. 
And um, one night, I was giving Eileen a ride back to, she had temporary shelter. And um, my sister Gretchen and I were giving her a ride back from helping volunteer at Orange County Rescue Mission. She was helping to do child care there so the students could go to um, chapel that night. And I don't know what I said, but I suspect I was complaining. And uh, because I'd lost my job. And my husband did. We were both, we both were terminated without any severance, any unemployment, any health benefits. And, and it was a real rude awakening for this woman who had never had that happen to her. And to be 61. And I must have said something that was complaining because all of a sudden I heard, I heard Eileen speak from the back seat behind me. And she said, very kindly, very sweetly, she said, but Sheila, you're so blessed. You have a husband, you have a home, you have a car, you have food. You're so blessed. And I was like, God, you spoke to me through Eileen, and I quit complaining that night, Eileen. So thank you. Thank you. And I will say one other thing before I have Mike come up and give his testimony. I was feeling very unloved because of some of the, the way in which the termination was handled. I was feeling very, very unloved and couldn't understand why I deserved this kind of treatment. And feeling like I wasn't sure I wanted to, I, I could welcome people back into my heart as deeply and intimately as I had. I didn't know if I could completely give my heart again to ministry and have for fear it would get stomped on again, quite honestly. And so Eileen spoke to me on Saturday night. God spoke to me through Eileen. And the next morning I was sitting here at Hope Center. I was praying while Jim Penner gave the, the, um, was praying for us. I was sitting here. And all of a sudden I had little boy arms around my neck and a little boy kiss on the cheek. And it was from Max, who we all know is our pastor in training. And I was like, Okay, you know, God spoke to me. He told me Saturday night through Eileen I was blessed, and he told me Sunday morning through Max that I'm loved. And what a wonderful God we have, and how he speaks to us, exactly how we, he knows we will hear his messages of love, his love, messages of love. So I hope you feel that today. So Mike Strubel. Did you think you were... <laughs> I'm tickled to see you up here, my friend. Courageous man of God. I guess, first of all, the most important part was I developed a better relationship with the Lord. I think that was the most important part of the fast. And uh, like Sheila, <laughs> before all this started, the uh, beginning of this month, I was fired from my job. And I was praying for a new position. I had three job offerings this month, and I start a new job on Monday. Oh, I know. I was, I couldn't believe, yes, this is what I heard. When I launched this, this is the first time I've challenged a congregation to do this, and I was a little nervous about it. I'd done it myself privately, but I was a little nervous about it, and here's what I heard the first week. I'm so sick, I can't get my head off the pillow. I'm going through caffeine withdrawal, and then I heard from Mike the first day of the fast, Sheila, I lost my job. And I'm thinking, what have I done to my church? <laughs> But hallelujah, yes, Mike starts his new job. And it's a much better job, isn't it, Mike? It's a much better job. Much better job. God, God delivered you. Yeah, he did. He did. Okay, do we have any other Jim Penner? And we'll get right to you, Melody. I could spend two hours talking about the spiritual blessings that I've received on this fast. Because anybody know me, I like my food. I like my food a lot. Uh, and about a week into it, I didn't get it. I got head, a couple of headaches the first couple of days, but about a week into it, I got roaring sick. All the toxins coming out of your bodies. I mean, I, got, I haven't had a cold in five years. I just got a horrible cold. But anyway, at work, many of you know I reactivated my real estate license after I got let go with no severance like Sheila. And everybody said, it takes forever to get established in commercial real estate. It'll take you a year. I kept hearing that over and over again. Well, during this fast, um, I received three new listings wow. for commercial 
Uh, one is a, is a huge office complex up in Fullerton, 200,000 square, square feet office complex. One for sale near Main Place Mall. Uh, parcel of land by the city of San Juan Capistrano down off the 5 freeway. Wow. And a big center right next to St. Joseph Hospital. All basically came in during this fast. And the, the, the management, the management at CBRE, this is the biggest real estate company in the world, the, the manager is kind of looking at me and, and saying, wow, you're the blessed one. That's what he said to me. Wow. You're the blessed one. He goes to Mariner's Church. <laughs> Didn't know I'd been on a fast. And uh, all of a sudden, all these training things they had me do to help me get started, suddenly I no longer have to be in these training classes because they're, well, you don't need that, you know. So the Lord has just done an outpouring. But even beyond that, the spiritual outpouring that I've sensed for this church has been amazing. Sometime when I preach, I'll have to share with you just the tip of the iceberg of some of the things that God has revealed to me, not over just this church and where we're going, but where you're going individually. Amen. I've seen visions for many of you of what the Lord's going to do in your life. Praise the Lord. And it's fun. It's fun. I'll let you go. We have another, come on up. Melody, right? Hello, everybody. It, God is amazing. You know, he basically taught, through this fast, he taught me two things. Discipline and that we're not here alone. We're here together. And Beth, Beth Mueller, I don't know if you remember me, but you're one of my Facebook friends from school. And yesterday was your birthday, right? Or, or recently, right? So it's amazing. Like, she just became my Facebook friend within these last three weeks. And when she mentioned it was her birthday, I was like, Lord, I want to meet with her, but I'm so, you know, I have so much time, you know, so much to do. And here she is at church. And it's like when the Lord mentioned her name, I knew God wanted me to speak and, and show that, you know, at this last week, I wasn't at church because I had to work three days. And, it, you know, that was already scheduled. But the fact that God helped me through that, I had to put three, I worked three days, 12 hours a day, and I'm not used to that. So God gave me the strength, especially with the fast. And, you know, it's like, okay, Lord. <laughs> and, you know, when I was at work after that, that um, job, everybody's like, you did a great job, you did a great job. I didn't do anything special, but God does show us and he anoints us when we put him first. Amen. 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 God bless. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And I know that some of you had health breakthroughs on this fast. I know that some of you had job and financial breakthroughs. I heard the testimonies. Um, Mike's not the only one who got job offers. And some of you had interviews for jobs, and you're waiting to hear. And I just want to encourage you, because even if you haven't seen it yet, your breakthrough yet, God only delays his breakthrough for one reason, because he wants to, it'll be bigger and better if we, in his time and in his way. So we can continue to, so let us praise God. Lord God Almighty, we thank you. We thank you. Thank you for these testimonies, O oh Lord. Thank you that you love us, dear heavenly, heavenly Father. Oh, our Abba, our Daddy, we have nothing to fear. You hold us in the palm of your hand. And Lord, you, you have your breakthrough coming. For some, it will still be this morning. It's yet today, yet this morning. Yes. Oh, Lord, yes, you want to touch some of your children yet this morning. And so, Lord, and it may be for some tomorrow, and some it may be a month or two from now. But, Lord, we thank you today for the miracle of today and tomorrow. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's got a blessing for all of us today. Amen. We just have to be open and receive it. He wants to turn your wailing, your crying into dancing. He wants to take away your sadness and give you joy. 
He wants to make your heart sing, and oh boy, you just can't stop it. And give him praise forevermore. Come on, I want you to sing it with me. You turn my wailing into dancing. Here we go. You turn my worshiping and forgot I was supposed to come up here and introduce. <laughs> it happens to me sometimes. Well, many of you are here today because you wanted to hear this amazing woman, and oh, she's such a precious, precious gift to you and to me. And I'm going to ask Karen and Pastor Jean to start making their way up here. And um, we are blessed. We are blessed to have this woman of God. And lest you think at the age of 90 you should be thinking about retiring, Jean tells me she has 10-year goals. And when I asked her if she was available to speak today, she said, well, let me check my iPad calendar, <laughs> Sheila. <laughs> so let's get her set up. Thank Pastor you. Jean, 
Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for being here, my friend. Give her a warm, warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. You kids can't imagine how thrilled I am to be here today. I have such a great admiration for your pastor. Isn't she a wonderful gift from God? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and I have also with me today a friend and uh, fellow worker, uh, Karen Heinbach, who has been very close to me as a, uh, a, a friend and, and servant of God. And when I recently retired or re resigned from uh, Church on the Way, uh, where I had a weekly service, uh, Karen was the one who followed me. And she now occupies that p place in the pulpit. And God is wonderfully blessing her ministry there. And I've asked if she just come up and say a few words before I start today. Please, I know they'd like to meet you, Karen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just tell a little bit about Revelation Ministry. And oh, let's go ahead. All right. <laughs> I've been blessed to uh, uh, be born and raised in a Christian home where the Word of God was where it should be, you know, in, in priority. And so um, I remember in Sunday school learning Psalm 100 and the Lord's Prayer, memorizing it, you know, and of course at that time they'd have programs going on so that if you learned all your memory verses, you know, you'd, you'd earn points that you could uh, uh, turn in later and get little prizes or whatever. And, Hey, whatever works, whatever gets you in the Word, <laughs> if you need a prize, I'll tell you, there's a, lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of spiritual prizes for sure. But it's good for kids, and, and I just remember that it was, uh, as it is for most children, it's, it's easy to memorize. But I didn't really pick that back up again until about, oh, I was 17, and I learned the book of James. And then when I was in my 30s, I, uh, God just put it on my heart to memorize the book of Revelation. And so, and I did it. And, you don't really attempt things like that unless God puts it in your heart because you think, hey, you must be nuts. And kind but, of in your head, too. Yeah, kind of, yeah, <laughs> and in your head, too. But, you know, God, God prepares us. And I'm just here to say, if this is the way you want me to, to, to share this morning, you already know more Scripture than you think you know. Okay? You already know more than you give yourself credit for. And you can learn more than you think you can. That's right. You can. So today we're just sponges, aren't we? We're just going to soak up, soak up of the Holy Spirit, soak up of his word, and soak up of our dear friend, Pastor Jim. Praise Jane. the Lord. Thank you, Karen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Karen's very modest. Uh, after memorizing the book of Revelation, she uh, was able to have it recorded with the uh, uh, London Symphony. Uh, orchestra, uh, background music, and it is a beautiful recording. Um, I, um, I, I'm just so, I love anyone that loves God's Word, don't you? <laughs> and uh, so we just want to encourage you to uh, learn the Word and uh, discover perhaps that God has given you an extra gift of memorization as well and uh, hide the Word of God in your heart as David said, that you might not sin against the Lord. There's a, a, a joy of being here as well because I love women preachers. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, a great supporter of women in the ministry. We are, are daughters of the last days. Uh, on the day of Pentecost, uh, Peter quoted Joel's prophecy how that in the last days the Holy Spirit would be poured out. And of course they were witnessing this tremendous outpouring that took place in the upper room on the day of Pentecost that's recorded in Acts the second chapter. And uh, his uh, explanation was this is that. <laughs> this is that which Joel prophesied that in the last days he'd pour, God would pour out his Spirit upon all flesh upon his sons and his daughters, 
and they would prophesy and upon his sons and upon his servants and upon his handmaidens when and the old men would dream dreams I I was reading it one day and I mentioned to my husband uh, doesn't say anything in here about old women <laughs> and uh, he said oh that's all right he said that's what the old men dream about <laughs> <laughs> But the, there is, the, we are living in remarkable times, the last days, and it will extend until Jesus comes again. And during these last days, uh, we are so privileged to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and to live anointed lives. I love that little phrase in the 23rd Psalm, you anoint my head with oil. And the consequence is my cup runs over. <laughs> and so my cup is running over today uh, with joy and blessing and anticipation of what the Lord is going to do with us here together. Well, you've already heard my text uh, coming from the book of uh, Acts. Um, and it's, uh, the book of Acts kind of ends abruptly, if you'll notice. Uh, when you're studying the book, I understand this is going to be a new project for you. Uh, you're going to soon start a series on the book of Acts. And uh, it, it, it seems to leave you up in the air. I really believe that that's on purpose because the book of Acts is not over. Uh, we're still living in it. We're, we're the next chapter. <laughs> and we're continuing. Every one of us can have a story. You know, often when they're advertising the seats down at the Hollywood Bowl, they say every seat has a story. <laughs> and uh, I kind of like that idea of that not, uh, not only there, not just empty seats have a story, but people, everyone that's met Jesus has a wonderful story. Do you remember hearing Cliff Burroughs uh, uh, lead that great hymn at the Billy Graham Crusades? This is my story. This is my song. And so primarily, I'm here today because I have a story. And that is that once I was lost, but now I am found. And that once I was blind, but now I can see. When I was uh, 16 years of age, I was dying with an incurable kidney disease. Uh, one of my kidneys had never developed from after birth. It just never grew, never functioned. And then as I grew older and got into my teens, my other kidney, which was full size, uh, began to uh, break down. <clears throat> I, had, I had kidney disease. And so the doctor, after several uh, times of um, uh, the, my kidneys failing and the poison break, uh, backing up through all of my system and infection in my hands and my feet, every extremity was uh, just uh, so painful and my whole body just suffering with like rheumatism. And I was just in terrible pain, full of poison. And the doctor said, uh, you won't, my, I'm afraid she won't live very long. My mother was not a very religious woman. She um, was God fearing, but she didn't know the Lord. And, um, but she had had a childhood experience when she was only eight years old, just one, uh, one experience where she met a, a preacher, a Methodist woman preacher, who came out into the country with her wagon and horses and a little pump organ. And uh, she asked if she could set up uh, her tent. And she was a woman evangelist for the Methodist church, a real pioneer. This is like in 1908. And uh, what a brave woman she must have been. <laughs> and uh, so my mother had, she was allowed to go to one of those tent meetings that the lady had in the afternoons. Of course, there was no electricity, so they had to be daytime meetings. And um, my mother was an orphan. She was working for a family at the age of eight, uh, very mistreated and abused, but she, was allowed to go to one of those services and she went forward to the mourner's bench and that's what the lady called the altar and uh, when she called for sinners to repent 
And my mother said uh, uh, she was kneeling between a coal miner and a farmer. And she never felt so close to God as she did as she cried with the, uh, there over her sins and asked Jesus to come into her heart. But that was a one-off experience. And now that I was facing death, she recalled that experience. And she said, the evangelist called that getting saved. And that's what you need. You need to get saved. Before you die, you must get saved. And so she said, I'm going to try and find a preacher that will help you get you ready to die. Well, through a series of remarkable experiences, and by the way, I brought my book today. Uh, this is a commercial. <laughs> um, and in it, I give the more detailed story. But in a remarkable, extraordinary way, my mother came across a four-square preacher and attended the first service in Toledo, Ohio, in the opening of the new Foursquare Church. And it was a lady preacher. It just seemed like the Lord just kept bringing that into her life. And um, instead of this lady praying for me to die, she prayed for me to live. She believed in divine healing. She prayed for the sick. She anointed me with oil and prayed for me. And although I was in excruciating pain, the pain went instantly. And I felt like a slight shock go through my body. And then later when they took new x-rays and fresh examinations, the doctor came and stood by my bed. And he held up the old x-rays which showed the little black kidney, an unfunctioning, and the other kidney, badly diseased. And then he held up the new x-rays, and there were two full-size kidneys. I had had a miracle. <laughs> I was, had been wonderfully favored. We were talking, hearing these testimonies today. It's the favor of God. It's grace, all grace. I did nothing to deserve it. Didn't even know how to ask for it. But God gave it. Hallelujah. And I was impressed <laughs> with what God had done. Because uh, it's the only time anyone ever prayed for me like that. And I got a miracle. And uh, so then, that course, I had the greater miracle. I went to the... Foursquare Church, and up to their altar, they called it, <laughs> and knelt down and gave my heart to Jesus. And he gave me a brand new life, a spiritual life, as well as a new claim on my physical life. So I'm here today to stand in honor of the Lord and in thanksgiving for his, Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, today, and forever, praise the Lord. My text today is from Acts the 14th chapter. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting a crippled, a, a crippled from, boy, I don't know if that's the, the devil or the Lord. <laughs> or it could just be, it just could be something wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was the power of the word coming all of a sudden. <laughs> he was a, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. I know, want you to notice that. He heard Paul speaking, observing him intently. And seeing that he, and again, that word seeing, so he heard him uh, preaching. And then uh, Paul was observing him intently. So the senses are all activated. 
And he's seeing, he looks at this man and seeing that he had faith to be healed. And as I look over this congregation right now, that's what I'm looking for. If you have faith to receive what you need from the Lord today. Because I have prayed, and I'm sure many others have prayed, and you who have been fasting and praying, I'm sure the Holy Spirit has been praying through you for the Lord to give you faith to believe in him, to believe that he has not only what he used to do in olden days, in Bible days, but, and, or what he's going to do when we die and we never get sick again, but what he can do right now. Amen? Amen. And he is here today. And I'm looking for faith. God's looking for faith. He's looking into your heart. And he's asking you like he asked so many when he was here on earth. Jesus said, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Do you believe that the Lord is able to do and to give you the miracle that you need today and to touch you? And seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice. Now, some of us, at this point, we would quietly say, kind of whisper, stand up, you know, just in case the person didn't stand up, you know. <laughs> but Peter, Paul says with a loud voice so that all could hear, stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Hallelujah. Let's say that together. And he leaped and walked. So it was just an, wasn't a wobbly hanging on for dear life, hoping, but it was a real change, a tremendous uh, new condition for him. This man had never walked, never walked. He was born crippled. And not only was he healed, but he was able to walk. The Lord instantly taught him how to walk. You know, with your children, you had to teach them. You had to, and they had to learn how to get their balance. But this man sprang to his feet with the glorious, powerful healing of, uh, uh, virtue of Jesus coursing through him. And it not only strengthened his body, but it touched his brain and released for him the ability to walk and to leap. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord. My topic I uh, shared with your pastor was, are you going to give up or are you going to get up? <laughs> Maybe you ought to turn to the person next to you right now and just ask them that. Are you going to give up or are you going to get up? Leicester was in Asia Minor, and it was probably the town where Timothy came from. It was like a market town in the southern part of what today would be called Turkey, the modern part of a place called Turkey. And the Peter had preached here before on his first missionary trip, but he came back. <clears throat> and uh, as you look at the context here, it's just so interesting to see how that Peter came with a message. He came with, he, he was a man on a mission. He knew where, to, where he was going and what he was there to do. He was going to Lystra and he was going to preach the gospel. It's, it's a wonderful thing when you know who you are and what you're doing and where you should be. Uh, that's a great, that's a great uh, sense of security and assurance. It's called being in the center of God's will. And it happens to people when they open up their heart to Jesus and he becomes the center, then he is able to lead. So he was leading these men, Paul and Barnabas, uh, into this place of ministry. Is God leading you? Yeah. Do, have you? Do you feel that amen in your heart? I know the Lord has laid his hand on me. Amen? amen. And uh, 
to, to, be, to have that sensitivity, to have that awareness that you are walking and talking with the hand of God on you is the greatest privilege you can ever know in this world. That'll be the greatest honor you'll ever have in this life. There may be many titles bestowed upon you and awards given to you and rewards, but nothing will compare to the honor and the joy and the confidence that it gives to know that the hand of God is upon you. God has touched your life. And that means, what does that mean? That means that you are his. You know who you belong to. And he has a plan for your life, which isn't just a mere phrase and slogan. It really is true. And you're walking with that God divine guidance in your life. So Paul had come to, to Leicester with that awareness. He had come to preach the message. And when he came into this town, this place, he was not only with Barnabas and uh, surrounded by the pagans. Uh, this was probably, uh, there was no synagogue in Lystra. So this may have been the first city that he ever preached in. He didn't have a synagogue because that was his custom usually was to go to the synagogue and preach there. And uh, he would preach the gospel first to the to the Jews, and then he would go to the Gentiles. But uh, in this case, uh, the, since there was no synagogue, he started right in with the Gentiles. But the Jews were there, and they were Jews that pursued him, that followed him up wherever he went. They were, they were, where, they were the people he used to be with, and they loved him when he was one of them. But when he stepped out and accepted Christ as his Savior and became a missionary and evangelist with this new gospel, this, this wonderful message that he was taking everywhere, then they became his worst enemies. They, they couldn't leave it alone. They couldn't just say, well, that's your choice. They couldn't, there was no tolerance. There was no saying, well, that may be the way you see it, Paul, but we see it differently. And they would shake hands and go their different ways. Oh, no. They, they organized themselves to pursue this man and to destroy his ministry. The, 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 your your um, pastor, one of your pastors said earlier, uh, nothing ever changes. Nothing ever changes. The enemy still works that way. He's not going to let you alone. He'll go after you. Because this is a battlefield. This world is a battlefield. And there's a constant conflict until Jesus takes us home. So get used to it. Get used to it. But the, the thing is, you're on the winning side. And uh, greater is he that is with you than he that is in the world, amen? amen. Praise his wonderful name. So they began to, to, to harangue and to, to stir up people around him uh, to stop what he was doing. After, after Paul uh, uh, stepped into this circle of, of uh, pagans and unbelievers, uh, he seemed to be his attention focused particularly upon this crippled man and he came closer to him and the word tells us I love it and you can just see the picture here he is uh, Peter uh, Paul is talking to people he, he's you know he's a uh, not it doesn't have a pulpit he isn't in the synagogue he's in the marketplace and he's just standing there talking to people maybe he's a street preacher I don't know and, but he's talking about, what, what do you think he's talking about? Jesus, yes. And, uh, and, and this man heard him talking, so he's listening. But all of a sudden, Paul turns and looks at him. 
And I believe he squatted down to look at him because the man was way down on the ground. He couldn't stand up. And he looked him in the eyes. It says He got right down where the man was and looked him in the eyes. And probably the man wondered if, what, what, what's he doing, you know? And, but Paul wasn't just uh, kind of trying to lock uh, eyes with this man and, and hypnotize him or something. Oh, no, he was looking for something. He was looking for faith. He was looking for faith. And uh, I think that at that point, the Holy Spirit was giving him discernment and probably a prophetic word that this man would receive a miracle if he could just have faith for it. And so Paul was there ready to give him a miracle, but he had to look for the faith. And the, today we often say, why aren't there more miracles in the church? I don't think it's a scarcity of people who want a miracle, nor is it a scarcity of people who pray for miracles and would be glad to pray for you to have a miracle. But it's a scarcity of faith. We need faith, not only on the part of the person who prays, but also the part of the person who receives. In the many countries where you hear about outstanding and remarkable miracles, you would discover that there is a high level of faith. Of, or maybe it's not, they don't call it faith, it's just expectation, or maybe even desperation. But they're looking for a miracle. They're looking for healing. They're looking for somebody to help them. They're reaching out for it. And so they're focused. And today I want to just say to you, friends, as don't, don't let the enemy, uh, those who would pursue you and disturb you and even stir up others against you, distract you. But keep your eyes on Jesus. And remember what you're here for. You're here to preach the word. You're here to talk about Jesus. You're here to bring a miracle for some, to someone else. And you need to focus on the need of faith. Look for faith. Don't look for a way to defend yourself, a way to fight your battle, a way to get even. But don't let that distract you. Rather, focus on the Lord and on the people God has sent you to and get at eye level with them so that you can find the faith. This in them. I think we've, the way you find, see whether a person has faith is not just a light in their eyes. It's like a fire that comes up out of their hearts, a passion. It's seeing their heart. And as you see the heart, then you recognize this is a person even maybe not so pious or perfect in any way, but passionate. They are de was desperate, and they need a miracle. And they're all around us, aren't they? And I pray that the Lord today will help you to see that the helplessness need not be hopelessness. Even though the man had no strength of his own, Paul knew the one who had all strength. Hallelujah. But you've got to keep your focus. That's the main thing that the Lord's asked me to to say to you as a pastor, Sheila, and, as, and you as a congregation, and all of you who are attending, those from you from the Union Mission, the world, either the devil will try to distract you with persecution or opposition, or else there will be even good meanings people that will offer you all kinds of uh, other offers, um, tempt you, to diversify, uh, spread out. And as my dad used to say, put too many irons in the fire <laughs> and um, lose your focus. The world can do a lot of things, a lot of good things, and do it very well. But only the church 
can find faith and give people miracles. And we need to keep our focus. Amen? Amen. So don't, don't be spread too thinly. Don't let your energy be dissipated uh, by trying to do too many things that others have asked you to do. But keep your focus on what God has asked you to do. I know I'm pulling out a, a facet here that isn't very obvious in the text, but I believe the reason Paul got down there and looked deeply into this man's soul was that he was trying, keeping his focus. All around him was this disturbance going on. There was anger. There was gossip. There was whisperings going on behind his back. But instead, he just kept to the job that the Lord had for him to do. Now that you're there, if you've been following the Lord, and you've gone where he told you to go, don't forget what you're there for. <laughs> Amen? And keep your focus. Um, the um, great uh, golfer Arnold Palmer recalled a lesson that he learned uh, at, during, uh, about overconfidence. <clears throat> and it was a final hole in the 1961 Masters Tournament. And he says, I had one stroke lead and it just hit a very satisfying uh, tee shot. I felt pretty good about myself and I was in great shape. And as I approached my ball, I saw an old friend standing at the edge of the gallery. And he motioned me over, stuck out his hand and said, congratulations, Arnold. And I took his hand and shook it, but as soon as I did, I knew I had lost my focus. So my next two shots, I hit the ball into a sand trap, then put it over the edge on the green, and then I missed the putt and lost the Masters. You don't forget a mistake like that. <laughs> don't lose your focus. Even your friends sometimes can put out a hand and say something that will get you out of line with what God has for you to do. That was just a tiny little incident, but I can think of many times when my husband and I went to start new churches in new countries. And how many times after we'd been there, there would be attractive offers made to us to do other things, to join other groups, um, to do good, nice things, good things. But we found that we had to get, as soon as we get back on our knees, <laughs> that the Lord would remind us of what he'd called us to do. And it isn't easy. It's usually harder to do what God has called you to do than to do what everyone else is asking. But faith flows all the way through this account. And it was not flowing aimlessly or at randomly, but it was a focused faith all the way. False preaching was focused. You know what they preached in those days, don't you? They preached Christ and Him crucified. They preached the cross. I've shared this before. My friend Karen will remember me sharing this, but sometimes when I'm teaching students at uh, King's uh, University, uh, about preaching and so forth. I remind them of how, I tell them of how when I was just a teenager and the Lord put his hand on me and called me to preach the gospel, I went and told my pastor. And he was a dear man. He was an ex-Salvation Army officer, um, um, a very stallion, a, a stalwart servant of God, that when he got to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, the Salvation Army didn't seem to need him anymore. And so that uh, their loss was our gain. And uh, he became our pastor, he and his wife. When I told him that the Lord had called me to preach the gospel, he said, that's wonderful, Jean. He didn't seem to be troubled with the fact that I was a, a girl, you know, <laughs> a teenager. He said, now the first thing you need to learn is how to pray. 
and he invited me to come and pray with his wife. Uh, one day a week after high school, I'd go right from high school to the parsonage, and I would pray with them until church time, which was like from 3.30 to 7 o'clock. And uh, I learned pastoral praying. And then he began to let me preach a little bit. And he helped me prepare messages. And uh, he taught me a, a little secret. He said, now you want to take your blank piece of paper before you make your notes and take a pencil and draw a fine line down and then a cross so that you have a cross on your empty page before you ever put a note on it. And then your sermon will be cross-centered. You'll remember to keep the cross in your message. Well, that's the way it was for those disciples. They preached Christ crucified. Paul said, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. They preached a Jesus who was not only historical, but alive. Hallelujah. And a, the resurrected Jesus. The resurrection was a main theme of the message that they preached. And Paul stayed focused on that. You keep Jesus in the center. Keep him in the forefront. Preach Christ. When Philip went to Samaria, he preached Christ and uh, uh, preached Jesus to them. And uh, that shook the city. Hallelujah. If you want to shake the city, then you've got to talk about someone that can shake the city. And that's Jesus. Hallelujah. And then there was the focused hearing. We need to pray more and more that people will get focused in their hearing. There are so many distractions, coming back to this distractions again, not only from opposition and persecution, but from amusements and entertainment and politics and business, TV, uh, Facebook, <laughs> uh, Twitter. I mean, in fact, just yesterday, I disengaged from Facebook because I felt that it was taking too much of my time from other things that were a little bit more attuned to what the God had called me to do. Can you see me? Okay. doesn't matter if you see me or not because I'm talking about focused hearing. <laughs> but he heard Paul talking. And he heard him talking about Jesus. Uh, when people listen to you, what do they hear? You know, of course, we can't talk about Jesus all the time, but do they ever hear you talk about Jesus? At work, at school, in your neighborhood. If he hadn't heard Paul talking, and he must have been talking about Jesus because of what happened, then the miracle would have never taken place. It is very true. Faith comes by hearing. Yeah, those, did you notice when you heard those testimonies today, how they raised your level of faith? How they excited you to think, I can believe for that. That God can give me a job. And, uh, and then uh, we know that primarily that scripture refers to the things that Jesus said. Uh, faith comes by hearing the things that Christ has said. And, of course, that would be primarily the gospel. But then there's also that rhema word where the Lord speaks to you in your heart and in your mind with, per uh, uh, with perception, with revelation knowledge, and that gives you directions and so forth. And when the, when the Holy Spirit, the way you know that it's not just your imagination and it's just not your eagerness to say something because we all like to talk, especially us ladies. Um, the, it, the, the reason, the way you'll know the difference is that when the Lord says something to you, there is a faith that comes with it. And you find yourself daring to think that you could do something that you would have never thought of doing a few moments before. And uh, you make choices based on, not on external uh, circumstances, 
and evidence around you, but uh, your choices are made are based upon internal leading of the Holy Spirit. That focused hearing, uh, keep a listening ear to what the Lord has to say to you. And uh, faith comes by hearing. And how will they hear unless uh, someone speaks? And how will they speak unless the Lord gives them something to say? And how will they, anyone hear what they have to say unless they are sent? And so this, this is all tied together. You must go where God tells you to go and say what he wants you to say and say it loudly. Don't whisper it in case it kind of leave yourself a little loophole in case it doesn't work. <laughs> but speak it out. Speak the truth. And stand up, speak up. And then as my husband used to say to young preachers in the homiletics class, stand up, speak up, and shut up. Because <laughs> there is a time for that as well. How can people call for help? Uh, Paul asks in Romans 10, if they don't know who to trust. And how can they know who to trust if they haven't heard of the one who can be trusted? And how can they hear if nobody tells them? And how is anybody going to tell them unless someone is sent to do it? And that's what's happened here. The Lord has sent you a messenger. He has sent you Sheila, Pastor Sheila, and others. And they are here to tell you, or speak to you, not tell you in a sense of not controlling you, but sharing with you a message that's burning in their hearts for the love of Jesus and uh, desire for you to love him too. And as you get, keep your focus and as Pastor Sheila and others here in, in leadership see your faith, then there will be miracles, more and more miracles among you. It's so simple. We complicate it. We try to have all kinds of reasons why it can't happen. I've often gone to places where they have talked about, the, you know, how-to schools and uh, seminars and, uh, and the, the, uh, the secrets for revival and so forth. And it's all negative. It's all why we don't have miracles and why we don't have healings. And I suppose that's profitable to a point. But you have to go beyond that and say this is what it takes. It takes that focus upon the needs of others, looking into their hearts and expecting that God is going to give you the word to say that will put them on their feet. Hallelujah. Put them on their feet. God sends us to speak words of faith that will produce faith. And then when that faith, is, the, the, the blessings are received, then that act of faith is kept going by a life of faith. And that's why pastoring is so wonderful. Um, when evangelists come and pray for you, they come and go. But the pastor who prays for you says and helps you through the difficulties, the temptations, the discouragement that often follows those times of breakthrough. And uh, that, thank God for pastors who are staying with you. Amen? Amen? And you are staying with them. Praise the Lord. And then focused faith, as I said, that develops spiritual discernment. I love this scripture. The Lord showed it to me in Ezekiel, the fourth, 40th chapter, verse 4. And the man said to me, Son of man, look with your eyes. Hear with your ears and fix your minds on everything I will mind on everything I shall show you. For you were brought here that I may show you. I think this is a very important word, and I want to read it again. Son of man, I mean men and women here today, <clears throat> look with your eyes. Hear with your ears 
and fix your mind on everything I will show you. For you were brought here that I may show you. And of course, then uh, there was the extraordinary revelation that God gave to Ezekiel. There is revelation knowledge just waiting to be revealed, be, to be opened up to you. And if you can just focus, keep your focus on, on uh, first of all, look at each other and look for the faith in each other. Encourage faith in each other. Stir up faith in each other. And uh, expect people to have faith. And then also just keep your mind upon what the Lord has put in, in your head and say it. Don't get distracted and uh, try to be um, too... Uh, all things to all people. <laughs> Uh, th that's good if you're trying to just go out and witness to a lot of people. But in ministry, there needs to be that focus. There are so many needs in this world. And you think of the people at Union Mission. They, they know that there are many needs in the world, but the Lord has given them a mission. And that is to feed the poor and to help the helpless. And they are focused on that. Maybe the Lord's put you somewhere else in another arena, another mission field, another marketplace, not in a synagogue, not in the church where everybody believes like you do, but in a place where you are the only one. What are they hearing from you? Do they hear you talking about Jesus? And are you looking at them? And are you discovering that you'll find faith in the most unusual places in, the months, in some of the most unusual people sometimes? And look for the faith. Expect that faith. And there will be miracles. Then finally, I just want to mention to you the focused authority that Paul had in that he spoke very clearly and very emphatically, rise up, stand up, and, and get on your feet. I love these words that Paul gives in another in 1 Corinthians 2. I didn't try to impress you with polished speeches and the latest philosophy. I deliberately kept it plain and simple. First Jesus and who he is. The Jesus and what he did. Jesus crucified. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And if you preach him, you've preached it all. <laughs> because he is the Savior. He is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. He is the a great physician, the, king, the healer. He is the coming king. He is all in all. Hallelujah. So preach Christ. And then there's a power in the cross. When you preach the cross, there is a power that's released. God honors it. I believe it's the blood of Jesus. That when you preach the cross, the blood not only becomes um, activated to forgive sinners and cleanse them of their sins, but it also forms a barrier against the enemy. The enemy can't step over that. And so preach Christ. Preach the, the cross. Preach the blood of Jesus and his blood power to forgive. For there's where your authority is. Hallelujah. It's kingdom authority that's released through the preaching of the cross. Paul, looking him in the eye, spoke loudly up on your feet. So look for the faith and then speak clearly your faith. Rise upon your feet and believe that that person that you're speaking to with the, pay, with the power of the Holy Spirit will rise to their feet. I was preaching in Perth, West Australia when a man came down the aisle with crutches and he not only was just kind of walking with his crutches, he was swinging his body with his crutches. He really should have been in a wheelchair because from his chest down, he was practically paralyzed. 
he had uh, numerous condi uh, conditions that uh, made him a, a very, very sick man. His neighbor, a few days before, had come to one of our services, and he was a gambler. And his wife, who had been converted a few weeks before, it got him to come to church. And so when his neighbor came to church, he came angry because his wife made him come. And uh, during the service, the Holy Spirit came upon him and conviction struck his heart. And when we gave a call for prayer, to come forward for prayer, he came forward. And that night, Mr. Prattley gave his heart to the Lord. He drove a bus in Perth, West Australia. He was a bus driver. And the next day as he was riding the bus, he was so thrilled with his salvation that he was telling the passengers on the bus about what had happened to him the night before. And as he was testifying to them, suddenly, uh, it was one of those buses where, you know, he wasn't in a little compartment in the front separate. He was able to talk to the passengers nearby. And as he was talking to them, he felt like he should blow his nose. And he blew his nose quite hard. And out of his nose came a terrible looking projectile. <laughs> it was sort of a worm-like thing kind of bloody and not very nice looking. But he saw it and he went like this and for the first time in years, he was able to breathe through that, that passage in his nostril. And he was, he, the Lord had, there had been an, a growth came out of his nose and he was healed. And he was showing the passage. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> they, they really didn't want to see it, you know. <laughs> So when he came home, he told his neighbor, Mr. Jennings. And that's why I could see Mr. Jennings coming down the aisle, because Mr. Jennings knew what God had done for his neighbor. And as he came up to the front, I said to him, do you believe? And I said, what do you want from the Lord? He said, I want to walk. <laughs> I want to be healed. And he was kind of a gruff man. <laughs> and I said, well, do you believe that God is able to do this? No, I don't, he said, but I have confidence that you do. <laughs> and I said, okay, that'll work, you know, that'll work. And so I prayed for him, and of course others were nearby, anointed him with oil and prayed for him. And the power of the Lord went through his body, and he was instantly healed. He dropped his crutches. He's, he, he, he didn't kind of stand there and just, you know, see if he was well. He did exactly what this man did. He ran down the aisle, out of the church, into the street outside. I said, stop that man. He, he's our exhibit A. <laughs> and uh, he was... He, uh, I asked him earlier, don't you, uh, how, don't you believe anything about God? And he said, no, I'm a bushwhacker. I said, well, what's that? Um, or No, he said, I'm a bush baptist. I'm sorry. I'm a bush baptist. And I said, what is that? And he said, well, you know the bush here. When they say the bush there, they met out in the country where it was very dry, semi-desert. He said, there's no water. So how could you be a baptist without water? So he said, that means I'm nothing. It was his way of saying he didn't have any faith or anything, you know. But when, so when he was healed, he didn't know how to say praise the Lord or thank you, Jesus, like we would, or hallelujah even. He said, woo-wee, woo-wee, which is sort of a bush call that they give out in the outback in Australia. And uh, he went out in the middle of the street and shouted this. Oh, I could have heard him for blocks, I'm sure. And then uh, he came back in, still running, ran down the aisle, back to the front again, wonderfully healed. The, the power of Jesus is transforming. And I just want to encourage you today to have faith right now. And I just look over the congregation here, and I would like to say to... to 
some of you, I can just see that there's, a, for many of you, there's a longing, great longing in your face. And the others of you, there is an expectation. And I pray that the Holy Spirit right now will just give you the courage to stand and claim your healing. Claim the miracle that you need. Claim the... Uh, and get focused. Get focused on what you need. Not on lots of things you need, but that one particular thing that you need so very, very much. I wonder if you could just stand where you, where, where you are. If you have that faith, you have faith. Just stand. We're going to claim that healing. We're going to claim that work of God right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I guess everybody needs a miracle, don't they? I want to pray just a few moments. Do you mind if I take this moment longer? I, I, Father, I just... Pray right now that the Holy Spirit will show us in particular what you are doing for some of these, Lord Jesus, who are standing at this time. Oh, Jesus. I, I sense that there is someone here that has the problem in your home where, where your husband has left. And you're trying to raise a child on your own. And it really is difficult. A difficult time. More difficult than usual right now. And I just want you to know that the Lord sees you in your loneliness. And he, he has not abandoned you. He has not forsaken you. And he has had an answer for your need. I believe that the needs for your child, the special needs of that child, his schooling, and the, the help that you need in bringing this child into a better quality of life, is the Lord is sending it to you. And I believe that the power of the Holy Spirit is upon you to give you wisdom to make the right decisions at this time. It's a, it's a critical time. It's a difficult time. But it's also a time for a miracle in your life, a turnaround. And I just want to claim that for you right now in the name of Jesus. Where is this uh, woman that has this need, needy child you're trying to raise on your own? And I just pray for that the virtue of Christ to come upon you. I want you to come up here and just stand here. There may be other women that want to join her right now, but uh, let's just, there's, there's a healing here of the brokenhearted, but also a, a revelation God wants to give you. you. Right now you feel like you're, you're just no good, you know, you're a failure. You're not a failure. You may have failed. We all have failed. But you're not a failure. And uh, I just take that label off of you. And the accuser. I rebuke the accuser in the name of Jesus. And I claim for you healing and restoration of your own self. Your own self-esteem. You are in Christ. And Christ is in you. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you now, Lord, for a gift of knowledge and understanding as a mother for this child, Lord. I thank you for a miracle for this child. In the name of Jesus, and new opportunities, open doors, Lord, and people that will favor her and her child and give him the chance that he needs. In Jesus' name, for the glory of God. Now just let that anointing right now transform your mind. A turnaround from thinking there's no way out of despair, failure. And you're going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind right now. Just let that happen right now in the name of Jesus. 
He come a shadow of my shade out of my glory. He heals the brokenhearted. A broken heart and a contrite spirit he will not despise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. And Lord Jesus, I just speak to the place where she lives. That any shadows there, any darkness that is in any corner of that habitation goes in the name of Jesus. I command it to go. Angry words that have been spoken, like a curse that was put upon you. It goes in the name of Jesus, and we break it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are not cursed. You are blessed. You are a talented woman. You have creative gifts, things that you have laid aside during your troubles, or even before that, for the sake of others. Uh, but now the Lord is saying to you, not only will I give you the help you need, but I am going to give you the confidence to use your gifts use your talents and believe that you can be the person don't throw away your dream god is still going to fulfill it in your life hallelujah i thank for blessing our child in jesus name is there more than one child this one child uh, catherine is the girl hmm? It's a bad boy, a boy again. All right, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that Cameron and Danny will be men of God. That, Lord, you will guide their footsteps, that you'll give them the inclination to turn towards righteousness, to love you, a hunger for you, Lord Jesus, early in their lives. In the name of Jesus and for the glory of God, amen. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Have courage. Amen. Have courage. Hallelujah. And then there's someone with, I, I think it's like glaucoma in their eyes, where the eyeballs are getting kind of hard or ossified. The Lord wants to heal you and restore your sight and save your sight. Where is this person with this eye condition of uh, glaucoma in their eyes? Be healed in the name of Jesus. Raise your hand up high. Raise it. Are you raising your hand for that or are you just praying generally there? All right, there's someone, there is someone here for this. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Over here, is it you with an eye condition? Sight. All right, will you bring her up, please? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to pull this chair around here. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said that it was a suspicion, but they said that he doesn't think so. I'm going to go back. Okay. Uh huh. All right. All right. <clears throat> the fear of losing your sight, we rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Fear no evil, for Lord, you are with me. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you now. We lay our hands upon your eyes in Jesus' name for perfect eyesight, for a clear bill of health as you go back for this examination. That it'll testify, there'll be evidence of the wonderful healing power of Jesus. In the name of the Lord, we ask this, and we give you this gift in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Are you together? Let me pray for the two of you together. So, um, are you a writer or a communicator or actor or something? Yeah, you're very creative. And uh, there's a, it's like a rainbow of giftings in you. And in Jesus' name, I pray, for, Lord, for a release of happiness between these two and hope, hope and belief that what they wanted to happen, hope would happen, will happen, Lord. 
by your power. Open up doors for them, Lord Jesus, I pray. And I pray that your own spiritual life will go deeper and deeper. In Jesus' wonderful name, spiritual perception, as well as being able to visualize and imagine and, uh, and, and uh, bring into realization things that you only see first in your mind, like an artist who brings forth the picture on the easel or a singer who brings the song out that he first hears in his heart, or the story that uh, is whispered in your mind and heart that uh, you're able to give many to read. In Jesus' name, open up this man's life, Lord, to be all that you, he's, he has various gifts, and we thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I thank you for healing of my sister's eyes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. All those of you with eye trouble, eye weakness of some kind, just claim it right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Receive your sight. And even though, even, even though you're aged like I am, the Lord give you clear vision. And it not regress and, and go worse, but go stronger. In the name of Jesus, amen. I have to go back because uh, I took, had a preliminary examination, and he said, oh, the, your glasses are too strong for you. Your <laughs> eyes are strong. So the Lord, my eyes are not getting dimmer, they're getting stronger, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 90. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're talking about someone lame in their feet or couldn't walk. And I believe there's people here today that was not just ordinary corns or things like that, uh, calluses or whatever, but severe, really serious foot trouble. One, someone that stands a lot in their work. I don't know if they're a cook in a restaurant, but there's, they stand a lot and they need healing in their feet. In Jesus' name, where is this person with uh, serious foot problems? Uh, you're, you're out for everything you can get, aren't you? <laughs> all right, that's all right, that's okay, good for you. I'm glad to see the faith in you, amen, amen, amen. But here's, a, yeah, here's another one, amen, hallelujah. Did you bring her up or for you too? All right, all right here, foot trouble, amen, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. We speak loudly in Jesus' name, or health to your feet, every bone, every ligament, every muscle in place, and your feet be strong in the name of Jesus. The arches be strengthened, Lord, for the glory of God. The toes be straightened in the name of Jesus. I thank you for this, Lord. I just lay hands upon you to confirm it now. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Are you a chef? No. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, receive your healing for the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you coming for prayer or are you coming to pray with others? Good. That's wonderful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Straighten this foot. That's what I was seeing a while ago when I was saying, let these feet be straight. Yes. In the name of Jesus, yes. 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 Be healed for the glory of God. In Jesus' name. And tell others about it. For the glory of God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. For the glory of God. Hallelujah. 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 I see faith over there with that um, African-American couple. Are you in ministry of some kind, or you too, right there? Are you praying for something particular, you too? Because I see a strong faith in you, and I want, to come, I want you to come up here and let me honor that faith by a prayer of faith. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe that this fasting time, you've you're been pressing through for something very definite. What is it that you're seeking God for? I need a job. Uh -huh. And I'm afraid to go home. Pardon? A child. That's what I thought. A longing for a child. Amen. Amen. Thank you for a creative thank word you, right Lord. now, Lord thank Jesus. You, Lord. We thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for family. We thank you for children, Lord Jesus. We thank you for blessing this marriage. Thank we thank you, Lord Jesus. And also that you will prosper them. I believe that there's promotion. Now, with scripture comes to me that the phrase promotion comes from the Lord. And even though someone else may have seemed to demote you, God will promote you. And he's going to give you favor in the name of Jesus and open up a door that you didn't think would ever open again. You tried once and you knocked, but nothing happened. But knock at that door again, brother, because somebody, the Lord's done something behind the door. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, he come a Sheila the eye of Messiah. In Jesus' name. And it will open and for the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And, and hallelujah. Yep, that, that pastor sent me a birth announcement. All right. You do your part, God will do his part. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I didn't mean for that to come over the microphone so loudly. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. There's someone's ears being opened, a crackling in the ears. And it's not only a, a, a crackling in your ears right now, but it's been an annoying noise and sound in your ears. The Lord's healing you now, like tetanitis in the ears. The Lord's healing those ears. Where's this person sensing that touch from the Lord? Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen, Jesus. We thank you for hearing in the name of Jesus for the glory of God. Yeah. Good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're on your ears. In the Matalia Makoya, Mashala, Masita, Lili, Lili, Aya. The ear opens in the name of Jesus. May open every canal in it and remove anything that's causing this obstruction for the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother, do you need healing or here? All right. In the name of Jesus. Bless both of these brothers, Lord, with perfect hearing, good hearing, and also a testimony that, Lord, as they talk about you and what you've done for them, that others will come to know you too. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise. Let's just raise our heads and give the Lord the glory now and praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And pastor, just keep focused on what God's called you here to do. There's going to be other people offer you some, maybe some other um, deals, you might say, or uh, partnership with other things. But just keep single-minded and uh, listen carefully to one another. Amen? And look into each other's hearts and look for the faith and where you find it. Help them use that faith for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye. God bless. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just take the person's hand next to you. Let's just end this with prayer. I'll pray for you. Pray for me too. For the burdens that we share won't seem so much to bear. Take it to Jesus, He cares. Just leave your 
Jesus. Can you all just say that with me, that prayer out loud? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for coming, for dying, for being our risen, alive, healing, loving, active Lord and Savior. And oh Lord, you care about each and every one of us. And you gave us a word today to show us how much you do care about us. And we are just so very, very grateful for you. Thank you for the gift of Pastor Jean Darnell. Thank you for the gift of Pastor Karen. Thank you, Lord, that you are, will never leave us or forsake us thank you Jesus so now now may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you that peace that passes all understanding and that faith that is unshakable and that hope that is unsinkable and that love that is unquenchable and before i say amen i hope you will forgive me for announcing we will not be meeting here in two weeks september 23rd we are having an all-church picnic. If you need directions, please stop and pick them up on your way out. Um, the only reason I tell you that is because we love you and we don't want to miss you. Okay? So in two weeks, because we, we just don't have the room. But we will be fellowshipping together in the park. And I call it Bring Your Dog to Church Today. So, but now, oh God, thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let us close one more time by saying together, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you.
Tomorrow and hope for today.